Abraham Lincoln called upon several states to furnish 75,000 troops to suppress combinations in the seceded states too powerful for the law to contend with. This escalates into a conflict which is more often termed in history as the Civil War or the War Between the States, which lasts from 1861 to 1865. The two factions in which the country was divided were the Union, meaning the Northern States, and the Confederates, meaning the Southern States. The American Civil War was the result of decades of sectional tensions between the North and the South. The roots of the Civil War can be traced to increasing differences between North and South and their growing divergence as the 19th century progressed. Among the issues were the expansion of slavery into Western territories, the South's declining political power, states' rights, and the retention of slavery. Though these issues had existed for decades, they exploded in 1860 following the election of Abraham Lincoln who was against the spread of slavery. The battles of the Civil War were fought across the United States from the East Coast to as far as West as New Mexico. Beginning in 1861, these battles made a permanent mark upon the landscape and elevated to prominence small towns that had previously been peaceful cities. During the war, Union forces suffered approximately 360,000 men dead and 282,000 wounded. Confederate armies lost approximately 258,000 men and 204 wounded. The total number of men killed, 642,000. Edith Whitley writes that in April of 1861, when the conflict came, young Sam Davis, barely 20 years of age, heard the call to duty. He immediately answered by joining the Confederacy attached to the Rutherford Rifles recruited in Rutherford County under Captain Ledbetter of Murfreesboro, which became Company I of the 1st Tennessee Infantry, commanded by Colonel George Maney, which in the early days of the conflict were among the first to volunteer. His father, then beyond the age to endure war hardships, sent Sam away with his blessings. His mother, although with a heavy heart and a lump in her throat, encouraged the vigorous lad as he entered upon the final chapter of his career. Sam Davis was born on October 6, 1842, to two middle-class farmers, Charles Davis, and his second wife, Jane Simmons. They moved to Smyrna, where Sam spent most of his adolescence in this antebellum-style home. Edith Whitley writes in her biography of Davis, Even as a child, he was quiet and very refined. Davis's parents played a vital role in his education and saw to it that he attended school. Whitley also writes that, when Sam was 19, he enrolled in the Western Military Academy in Nashville, Tennessee, under the direction of Bushrod R. Johnson and Edmund Kirby Smith, who both were commissioned to help organize the Confederate Army, later becoming Confederate generals. When the North and South rushed into arms, Sam decided to join in the Army. Many cadets were sent out as drill masters, while Sam enlisted into the 1st Regiment of Infantry in 1861 as a private soldier, where soon after marched off into the first battle of the Civil War at Cheat Mountain, which was also the first of the Confederate losses. Less than a year later, Sam Davis was wounded in two battles, Shiloh in April 1862 and Perryville in October 1862. In 1863, after recovering, Sam Davis was recruited by General Bragg to become a member of a company of scouts to take on a highly active service as a courier. The company was under the leadership of Captain H.B. Shaw, who was disguised under the name of Coleman. The commander in charge over all of the scouts was General B.F. Cheatham. As a scout, Sam was devoted to helping his company learn all they could on the status and movements of the Federal forces. Sam was said to be one of the bravest of his command, and to the rest of his company, he was nearly faultless. Around the 20th November, 1863, Davis was supplied with complete reports from Captain Shaw, Coleman, and sent on his journey to Confederate lines. It had always been believed that there was a Union traitor who had given this information to Davis. However, in some accounts, it was a slave by the name of Houston English, who apparently was soon to be a servant of General Dodge, who was in command of the 7th Kansas Cavalry, who was in search of the Coleman Scouts. Just a few days before his death, Davis was temporarily at his home in Smyrna, Tennessee. He was barefoot, cold, and hungry. The curtains were drawn, so he was hidden better from the Union soldiers who were patrolling the town. His father was making Davis a new pair of boots because Davis's were so worn from traveling by foot hundreds of miles. He could not stay long because the Federals would soon find him. 
During his long trek, he encountered some Union soldiers in Minor Hill, Tennessee. He was captured and was ordered to give up all information he possessed. Davis refused for the love of his fellow soldiers and the Confederacy. He simply sealed his lips and shook his head. The Union soldiers had no other choice but to threaten him for his life if he did not give up the information. Davis was sentenced to be hanged. Until then, he stayed in prison on Pulaski, Tennessee's town square. On the last day of his life, Davis rode to his execution site on his own coffin. Once they arrived, he was given one last chance to confess the knowledge he had. The soldiers did this because they didn't want to take his life. They gave him five minutes. Still sticking with his decision, Davis spent those final minutes of his life writing a note to his mother. Dear Mother, I have five minutes to live, and I will spend it writing to you. I don't want you to grieve after me. I don't only feel I am doing my country's bidding, but all heaven is sanctioning the act I am about to take. I've asked the chaplain to sing, On Jordan's stormy banks I stand, and cast a wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land, where my possessions lie. John C. Kennedy, a close family friend, and Oscar M. Davis, Sam's brother, were sent by his father to travel from Smyrna, Tennessee to Nashville to buy the nicest casket they could find. Then they were to travel to Pulaski from Nashville to retrieve Sam's body. After finding Sam's body, they placed him in the new casket and headed back to Smyrna. Since the war and several battles had taken place in southern Tennessee, there were many bridges that had been burned. Therefore, to cross the Duck River, they had to use a flatboat. Media Davis Sennett, born in 1886, was the regent of the Sam Davis Home Association and the niece of Davis. She recounts in an interview taken in 1945 that Sam was the oldest, and my father, the second youngest in the family of nine, was only four when his soldier brother was executed. She also stated that it was unwritten law among the members of the family and the slaves to not speak of Sam's death. Miss Sennett passed away in 1963. On the statue in Pulaski, the words on the left base of the statue say, If I had a thousand lives, I would lose them all here before I would betray my friend or the confidence of my informer, Sam Davis. And on the right side of the statue reads a quote from John 15:13, saying, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Confederate nationalism is still somewhat of a powerful force of today. The creation of this ideology during the Civil War influenced most white males in the South. Historians think that nearly 61% of white, military-aged males joined the Confederate Army during the war. Rooted deep in Christianity, a strong conservative agenda resonates throughout the South today. Nicholas Vale from Trinity University writes that slavery played a defining role in antebellum Southern religion. The biblical justification for slavery dominated religious tensions between the North and the South leading up to the Civil War. The early idea of the Southern American dream was being wealthy and owning a plantation, and to have a plantation, one would need slaves. Whatever the case, the deep roots of the South have been planted in a soil of religion, slavery, discrimination, nationalism, and imagined between a balance of state rights and core American values. White supremacy, along with the removal of Confederate statues across the United States, has become a national conflict. This conflict has been brought to light in the United States through the removal of statues like the General Robert E. Lee statue in Charlottesville, Virginia. Protests and rallies of events like this one have caused chaos and fights between white supremacists and supporters of those who want to deconstruct the statues. Many people have died in these protests. The protests in Charlottesville left 19 injured and one dead. White supremacy groups have continued to appear at these statues and cause a national outbreak of the removal of the statues. The statue of Sam Davis can be viewed by protesters as a symbol of slavery and racism, which leaves question to the deconstruction of Confederate statues. Even though Sam Davis showed great valor and integrity in the face of death, was it for the appropriate cause? Did Sam Davis die to defend the idealism of slavery in the South, or did he die so to protect his comrades who fought for the idealism of slavery?